Okay, so um, I don't have a clean uh, test to be able to write on, so I have taken another student's and uh, I'm going to write on this one. So number one, the student investigated the reaction of magnesium with oxygen. The student calculated that 4.8 grams of magnesium would make 8 grams of magnesium oxide. And the equation is as shown. So I'm just going to write it out again because I'm going to write on it plus O2 to give 2 MgO. So we know that 4.8 grams of magnesium will give us 8.0 grams of magnesium oxide. It says what mass of oxygen is required to produce 8 grams of magnesium oxide. So from the conservation of mass, we know that whatever the amount of products we have, we must have had the same amount of reactants to begin with. So uh, if we've got 8 grams that we've made, we must have on this reactant side, this must equal 8 grams. So 4.8 plus what gives 8 grams? And the answer is 3.2 grams. So 3.2 grams plus 4.8 grams gives us 8 grams. So our answer is 3.2. Our next question was uh, making magnesium oxide from magnesium. So we had it in this crucible. We had magnesium in the crucible, heating it up to uh, cause it to burn and uh, to make magnesium oxide. So we weighed out 2.4 grams of magnesium, we heated it, we let the lid uh, off a little bit just to let oxygen in so that um, we could form as much magnesium oxide as possible but without letting the magnesium oxide escape. We heated up all the magnesium and it formed a white powder and then we, we weighed the magnesium ribbon, uh, the magnesium formed. Okay, so we started off with this amount of magnesium and this is the amount of magnesium oxide we made. It says calculate the mean mass of magnesium oxide. So this is magnesium oxide. To calculate the mean mass is we add them all up and then we divide by the number we've got, which is what this student has done. So they've added all of these together and got a total of 29. 1, 8, and then they've divided it by 4 because that's how many we had. And so the answer is 7.295, uh, which has been correctly rounded up to 7.30. It asks for two decimal places, uh, just that the student forgot to put grams in. So uh, I knocked a mark off because the units weren't involved. So that's 7.30 grams. And then 1.3 uh, question, the student produced less magnesium oxide than expected. Give two reasons why. And we've got two reasons here. So some of the reactants were lost as gas. Uh, so we could have lost some of the reactants. Um, some of the reactants may not have fully reacted yet. Um, having reread this, perhaps that should have been some of the products uh, were lost as, um, as gas. Uh, but I've given that two marks now, so it'd be a bit awkward for me to take it back. Okay, so it's uh, some of the products were lost. Uh, some of the reactants may not have been fully reacted. So that's a good two reasons why. Um, a solution, uh, sorry, a student made two solutions, A and B. Uh, solution A contained five grams of copper sulfate in 50 centimetres cubed of water. Solution B contained 10 grams of copper sulfate in 100 centimetres of cubed of water and student added solution B to solution A. The student concluded that the new solution is more concentrated because it has more copper sulphate dissolved in it. Is the student correct? Well if we work out how many grams there are per centimetre cubed, in the first one it's 5 grams divided by 50 which is centimetres cubed, which is one gram per centimetre cubed. It's, it's like finding density. That's in A. If we look at B, it's 10 grams in 100 centimetres cubed. So when we work that out, it's, um, I said that's one gram, that's 0.1 gram. That's my fault, sorry, that's 0.1 gram per centimetre cubed. 10 divided by 100 
is 0.1 gram per centimetre cubed. So we can see that actually A and B are the same concentration of solution. So um, the new solution is not more concentrated. So the, the student would be incorrect for the reason that they're both the same. OK, so let's have a look at 3.1. Uh, what is the value of the Avogadro constant? Uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So uh, you have to just remember it. it these mi to the minus 23 is very, 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 very small. So it's neither one of these two. So it has to be B or C. Uh, but it's, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So uh, D would be correct. So here I'm looking at what is the relationship between the Avogadro constant and a mole. The Avogadro constant, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, is how many particles there are in one mole of a material. Okay. So one mole of carbon contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23. One mole of bananas contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 bananas. Uh, one mole of apples contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 apples. One mole of water contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water. So it's a number and the relationship is like a dozen, a dozen is 12, a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So it is a constant number and it means 6.02 times 10 to the 23. When we're talking about two moles of something or three moles of something, we're actually talking about two or three times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So it's a proportion. We're looking at proportions. Uh, so describe how you calculate the relative formula mass of a compound. Uh, you would take the mass of each individual atom and add it together to create the total mass of that formula. Okay, so uh, you take each individual atomic mass of each atom in the formula and add them together to give the total uh, formula mass. Total formula mass. Get a value. So with this one, the individual atomic masses of each atom in the formula are added together to give the total formula mass. Here, how many moles are present in 0.05 grams of sodium hydroxide? The relative formula mass of sodium hydroxide is 40, so the number of moles is the mass divided by the molecular mass. We've been given the mass as 0.05 grams. The molecular mass is 40, so 0.05 divided by 40, it gives us 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Okay, 5.2, uh, what's, what's the concentration of the solution in grams per decimeter cubed? So we've been given grams as 0.05, we've been given the, decimeter, uh, the centimeters cubed as 25, so uh, 25 centimetres cubed, if we want to turn that to decimetres cubed, we have to divide it by a thousand. So 25 divided by 1000 will give us centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed, and that is 0.025, as this student has quite rightly calculated here. So uh, the concentration 0.05 divided by 0.025 gives us two grams per decimeter cubed. Correct. Okay, 5.3, describe how a change in mass of the solute, so that's what we're dissolving, would affect the concentration of the solution. Uh, so the more solute that you add, 
the concentration increases. So if you're adding more solid, then you're going to be increasing the concentration, as is said here. So the higher its concentration of solution. 5.4. OK, so describe how a change in the volume of the solvent would affect the concentration. If you're adding more liquid, then you're going to dilute it. So the, the higher the volume of solvent, the less its concentration. OK, so you're going to dilute it. So basically you would say this will be diluted. So the concentration would become less. And that's what I was looking for. And there it is. 5.5. A student investigated the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid was the limiting re reactant. So basically once it's used up, it's the reaction stopped. So when sulfuric acid has been used up, the reaction will stop regardless of how much so more sodium hydroxide you add. So explain what is meant by a limiting reagent or uh, reactant in a chemical reaction. Um, so the first reactant to be used up in the chemical reaction is the limiting reactant. OK, that was worth two marks. The third mark was to say that um, OK, so when we heat calcium carbonate, it forms calcium oxide and carbon dioxide, as we see here. We've been given the relative atomic masses and we've been told that the student heated 25 grams of calcium carbonate. So what was the mass of the calcium, uh, the carbon dioxide produced? So we still got conservation of mass here. Uh, we know that whatever we start with, whatever mass we start with is the mass that we finish with. And... Um, we can work, I mean, it's, it's nicely worked out here. But uh, so if we look at this, we've got calcium carbonate. We've got 25 grams of calcium carbonate. And that gives us calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. OK. So we can work out the masses of these. So the atomic masses uh, for calcium carbonate gives us 100 and for calcium oxide 52 and carbon dioxide is 44 that's not 52 that's 56 okay so 56 so we know that um, if we have 100 grams, so this is the atomic masses. These are the atomic, more the formula masses. OK, so if we can, we can turn these into um, grams and we know that if we have 100 grams of calcium carbonate, it's going to give us 56 grams of calcium oxide and 44 grams of carbon dioxide. Uh, but as it is, we only have 25 grams, so we've got a quarter of what we thought. So we're going to, so we can see that that's a quarter. So that's a quarter. So we're going to get a quarter of uh, carbon dioxide. So it's 44. So a quarter of 44 is 11. So we're going to get 11 grams of carbon dioxide. And actually, that's what the student has got here. 
he's done it in a different way or she's done it in a different way uh, because they've worked out the number of moles. You know you've got one mole of calcium carbonate, it's going to give us one mole of calcium oxide and one mole of carbon dioxide. Uh, one mole is uh, 100 grams but we've got 25 grams so 25 divided by 100 is 0 0.25 moles that is going to give us 0 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide and if we work out here you can see moles is mass divided by molecular mass so we want to know the mass so the mass is the moles times the MR the molecular mass which the student has done so 0 0.25 moles times by 44 which is the molecular mass it gives us 11 grams so the 11 grams there so two ways to do it, you can do it via moles or you can do it by using the um, conservation of mass. And finally, we've got this sulphur dioxide emissions and they produce acid rain. Uh, and in 2010, 1.9 times 10 to the 7 kilograms of sulphur dioxide was emitted by vehicles. Calculate the number of moles of sulphur dioxide emitted. Give your answer to two significant figures. Okay, and in standard form. So we need to use this relationship. So uh, I'm going to put Mr. Uh, Green Nags, because uh, I use that. Uh, I need to find, it says give, uh, calculate the number of moles. So moles, which is N is grams divided by molecular mass. This is in kilograms, so I need to turn it into um, grams. Uh, so that's 1.9 times 10 to the 7 is kilograms, and I'm going to times it by 1,000, which is 10 to the 3. So I'm going to times it by 1,000. Oh, I'll just pull this over this way so you can see what I'm doing. So 1.9 times 10 to the 7 is the kilograms I'm going to turn it into grams so I'm going to times it by a thousand I'm then going to divide it by the molecular mass of sulfur dioxide uh, which is 32 for the sulfur plus two oxygens is 32 so that gives me 64 so I divide it by 64 and that's going to give me one humongous number there uh, which I'm going to put into my calculator Okay, so 1.9 to the 7 equals times 1,000 equals divided by 64 equals quite a large number. So 2968751234 moles. And it wants it in standard form. So give to two significant, significant figures and in standard form. So in standard form, uh, because this didn't give it me in standard form, I'm going to put my decimal point there. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 2.968 times 10 to the 8 moles to two significant figures, uh, one, two, I can see that third one there is six, it's above five, so I need to round it up, uh, and this is 2.9, so that would be rounded to 3.0, so three points, I better do it on here, so rounding it up to two significant figures makes it 3.0 times 10 to the eight moles, okay, so that would be my answer. And as you can see, the student also got that as well, just via a slightly different method, um, but we both came to the same answer.